this past Thursday, I made a video about what God showed me. And I'm here to tell you exactly what I saw. You and I both know if you're watching the signs going on in the world, the prophecy taking place in the world. By the way, did you know that in the Bible it says the generation that sees these signs and these prophecies coming to pass will not perish before his return? So you and I will not, our generation will not perish before he comes back. A generation is anywhere from 40 to 100 years. He's coming back. So, after what God sh has shown me, I am on a mission to tell the world about God, about Jesus, about that cross, about what it stands for. I'm on, I'm on a straight, laser-focused mission to minister, to preach, to go forth. To take as many people with me in that rapture as I possibly can. As I possibly can. To help them avoid what, what, what's coming. And directly after the tribulation. Uh, directly after the rapture is the tribulation. Directly after that horrific rapture day. Comes more horrific events. The tribulation. That's a horrific seven year period and here's the question I have is it seven years in man's time or is it seven years in God's time I think it's seven years in man's time because if it was seven years in God's time it would be 700,000 years of tribulation and I don't think it's that long I don't think it's that long at all I think it's seven seven days seven no, not seven days, seven years. I got that mixed up, my bad. Um, seven days, because I was thinking about God's timing, you know. But, uh, so what did God show me? I've often thought, because I used to play Gears of War, I never played Resident Evil. Don't worry about that. I never played that game. I, there's a lot of games out there that I would never play. Just never. Never. Um, but of course, going over to a friend's house, they've had Gears of War. And we, of course, play, right? We've, of course, played. Um, I don't play Gears of War anymore. I've played... Gears of War within the last four months, five months, because I've been in that place, in that season, in that time of being reconstructed um, by God, and it's been beneficial. It's it's been an uphill battle. It's a place where you you feel like you're losing, you feel like you're losing everything. Um, but you're not. God assures you you're not. He, he'll, he'll assure you, I'm, I'm making you stronger. I'm not hurting you. I'm making you stronger. Um, so, getting back to the topic of those monsters and Gears of War. Specifically, Gears of War 1 through 3. Okay? The others, um, no, those monsters, um, no, but I've often, I, I've often thought that those monsters in those games were actual demons, like I say, specifically one through three, um, now I'm not saying there's not monsters that are still the same as one through three, but Mechanical monsters, I don't think that's quite a demon. You know, I don't think we're going to have a robot demon, you know. Um, 
but I've often, like I say, I've often thought that those monsters in those games are actual demons. Um, and after what I've seen, after what God showed me, um, I can confirm to you that those monsters are real. Go on Google, look up the images of those monsters. They are real. They are real demons. You want to know what a demon looks like? There you go. Why are they in our games? If they're real demons? Because guess who's influencing these games? You don't think that he likes to trick people. You think you don't think he's a deceiver? It says it right in the word. Don't you believe what God says? Don't you believe what the Lord tells you? For if he lied once, he would not be God. If he did not speak the truth, he would not be God. So those demons in those games are very, they're actually quite amazingly pinpoint accurate. And there's one monster, in, there's a monster in that, in Gears of War 3. Um, he's, he's actually one of the bosses in this game. He is an actual demon. I'm, I'm going to show you a picture right here. Yeah, scary, right? And that's a small model compared to compared to the size he will be. He is a tribulational uh, demon. He's actually one of the seven beasts, I believe. He's going to come out of a mountain. He's going to come out of a mountain. He, he's going to come out of hell and break through a mountain. He's the size of a dinosaur. Literally. Not figuratively. Literally. The size of a, a dinosaur. And height. And he's brute. He's very, very, very brute. And he has powers. You read Revelation, these beasts will have powers. This man, this beast, I call him a man. This beast will have powers. This demon will have powers. He will have demonic powers. Um, and if you don't think that's an actual thing, uh, come on now. Read your Bible. Read, read your Bible. Look more in depth. Don't just skim through the Bible. Look more in depth. Get the full fruit of the Bible. Get the full scoop of the, that Bible. He's way more brute. His head is so... Oh, man. His stature is out of the... Big Iron Man. The super big brute Iron Man. Um, that's a... You know what I mean. The, Ho the Hulk Iron Man. I don't know what that's called because I didn't watch that movie. Um... I haven't watched a Marvel movie in probably five years, so my bad. Um, but I know about that Iron Man because I've heard of heard of it. I don't know the name of it, but if you want to know the stature of this beast, um, it's that stature, that head, that body, but that monster's Look, same, just about the same head, same body, same look. Um, you look at some of these monsters in these game, in that, in these three games. They're horrifying, aren't they? Go on Google after this. Look at some of those monsters. You're gonna be horrified. Look up Gears of War monsters. You're gonna be horrified. I'm not talking about the mechanical ones. I'm not. Those are the mechanical parts. I'm not talking about those. Come on now. I'm talking about the ones that don't have mechanical parts. Don't, don't have those kind of stupid things. Um, that's what the world is trying to go. That, that's what we're headed towards is a world where everything's okay, but then the 
within the church. Everything is acceptable. Come as you are. God doesn't discriminate. God will take you as you are. Everyone's getting into heaven. There's no hell. There's no, there's no tribulation. There's no antichrist. That's where we're going. I assure you, that is where we're going. Um, there will be a tribulation. And I don't know how well of an explanation the Bible gives. And I'm not disparaging the name of the Bible. I'm not disparaging God's word. What I'm saying, though, is that without his impartation, his, his, his revelation to you on this stuff, I'm not sure you're going to get the full scoop of it. I'm on one way mission now. I'm on a laser focus mission. I don't want anyone to have to go through this. Not, the, not even the rapture day. I don't want people to have to go through the rapture day. I don't want people to have to go through the tribulation. That's coming. It is coming. Repent now. We don't have long. We have seen the signs and the wonders. We have seen the prophecy coming to pass. A generation is forty to a hundred years, like I say. And a generation that sees those is a generation generation that will go to be with God. He will come back. That's not the second coming. That's the rapture. The second coming comes after the tribulation. Do more extensive research. Um, I believe the Antichrist is alive. I believe the Antichrist is alive today. And I believe he's an adult. And I would say who I think it is. But that's very controversial. And a lot of people would be very, very mad that I said that. But I think that, I think that man is the Antichrist. I'm not talking about Obama. And I'm not talking about Donald Trump. Come on. Not talking about U.S. Pre former U.S. president or or anyone within the United States. He is in the Middle East. I will tell you that. That's as much as I'll tell you. And he is alive today, and he's been alive for a little bit now. I believe that man is the. I believe he is the Antichrist. Um, some people think it's someone else. I don't know how to pronounce that name, but people believe that's him. Other people believe that's the Antichrist. I don't, I don't think they're right. I don't think they're accurate with it. And the description, I'll, I, screw it. I'll let you guys know who I think it is. I think it is Pope Francis. I think that is the Antichrist. I'm almost 100% certain of it. He will not die. He will die, but he will come back to life. Same old resurrection. That would be the first miracle of the Antichrist. No, I don't think... Actually, here's the thing. Here's what I wanted to say. I don't think that Pope Francis is the Antichrist. 
I think he's a false prophet. I think the Antichrist is going to raise France, Pope Francis. And I think that's how the Antichrist is going to fool people because they're going to think, oh, well, he raised Pope Francis from the, from the dead. Uh, well, this is Jesus. You're full. Jesus, Jesus already has come. He's already gone to church. I'm not talking literally, guys. Come on, come on. We're still here. You and I are still here. We ain't gone yet. The rapture hasn't taken place yet. The towers haven't fallen. If you want to know details on the on the rapture, on the rapture day, it's on the channel. Go down. Look at, find it. Please, if you have any faith in God at all, if you believe in Jesus Christ at all, if you believe what that Bible says at all, open your mouth, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your strangers about Jesus Christ. Stop being ashamed because the government says to be ashamed. Stop being scared of these government. Governments. And we're, we are hurtling, hurtling towards that one world government. Don't think so? Watch your news. You don't think the Mark of the Beast is already in, in, in project? There's a prototype. Guess what, guess what the Mark of the Beast is? It's for the tribulational Christian. That's what the mark of the beast says. We are not going to receive it. You and I will not have, to, have will not be forced to put that in our hand. That's for the tribulation. That's for those martyrs. You either do this or you you don't. You either do this or we're going to kill you. You either deny Christ or we're going to kill you. And how are they going to kill you? They're going to behead you. They will behead you. And I'll tell you right now. It would be, and I'll tell you right now, I'd rather be beheaded than some of the other ways that I thought they might do it. I, I thought at one point that they might put, hang us on, hang, hang those martyrs on the cross as a mocking of who they believe in, mocking them because they believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Um, even though they believe the Antichrist is, is, is the real Christ? How stupid is that? How stupid? How stupid is that? But here's the thing. I will plead with you. Don't hold him to yourself. Don't hoard him to yourself. Get out there and speak about him. If you have to go to a goodwill, not not a goodwill. If you have to go to a family dollar or or Dollar Tree, and you had to buy thirty Bibles for thirty dollars, even if even if it's not King James version, which most times it is, because that's the value most people think that Bible has. Um, do that. Get that out there to them. And, uh, hand out 30 Bibles every single week. I want, actually, here's what I'm going to challenge every one of you to do. Everyone watching, from this day forth, every single week, every single week, you want to pay tithes to this ministry or whatever, you want to go forth with this this church, you want to spread God's word every single week. I'm, I'm calling you to. I'm calling to. I'm calling you to. Uh, to a mission. 
every single week, I want you to go get 30 Bibles. They're at Dollar Tree. They're at Family Dollar, whatever you got, the 99 cent store. They're there. Buy 30 of them. By the end of every single week, I want you to hand all 30 of them out. Even if the person, even if the person you hand them to does not receive that Bible, even if they throw it to the ground, I want you to hand it to them. Just hand it, hand them that Bible. Tell them Jesus loves them, and walk away. That's all you gotta do. That's all I'm asking you to do. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Any one of us, any one of us who work at a job, any one of us can come up with $30 every week. Every one of us can. I'm calling you to, I'm calling you to action every single week from here on out. Go to your local dollar store, buy 30 Bibles before the end of that week. Every single week, hand out all 30 and repeat it every single week. If you can't get 30 from a certain, from one dollar store, go to another and then go to another it, until you have 30 Bibles. Or if not 30, at least 15. Well, except, I'll do, I'll accept 15. God will accept 15. You're doing it. You're, do, you're doing a good deed. You're doing a deed for the kingdom. At least 15. That's only $15. That's literally half of what I was asking before. At least get 15 $1 Bibles. And they're usually King James Version. So that will be very beneficial to these people. Um, don't give them the message. Please don't give them the message. You will you'll do them a serious disservice. You'll, you'll de defeat your purpose of what you're trying what we're trying to do as a as a church. And it might be might sound weird that I call this a church, but it is a church. The reason I'm asking calling you guys to action, calling you guys to do this. Because I think now more than ever we need to speak. And how do we speak? Through the word of God. Why? Because we Our foundation was found by that Bible. Our foundation was found in the Word of God. So, if our foundation as Christians was found in the Word of God, everyone else's who receives that Bible gets in that Bible, who, who reads it. You at least planted a seed of... You at least planted a seed in these people. You don't have to go preach to them you don't have to go stand on, on the side of a, on the side of the street, hold your Bible out and preach, which I do recommend. I would actually recommend that because it is very beneficial. You might get some people to hate because that's that's what the government wants. That's what news media wants. They want you to hate your neighbor, want you to hate your friend, want you to hate the people that don't, don't have the same belief system as you. Um, but they somehow they want that. But they also speak hatred. They also speak hate your neighbor, hate your friend, hate your, hate the person that has the opposing view as you. But everyone's equal. Everything, every, everything is okay. Friendship, uh, community. You see how back and forth they are. How wishy washy that gets. Please, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, and do God a favor. You realize if you give out at least 15 of those Bibles every single week, you realize how much treasure you're going to, how much rewards you're going to build up in the kingdom. God rewards us for doing his work. He loves us to do his work. He calls us to action, just as I called you to action, to do his work. He said, where I go, there are many mansions. I want a mansion. Oh, I want to have a mansion with Jesus. I want to invite him in. We have a pure glass of wine together. 
pure glass of wine, non-alcoholic. There won't be alcohol in heaven, but I do believe there might be wine. Do that for me, because what I saw. Mmm, Lord, I saw. Help me. Help me. Help others. Please help me help others. Please don't allow them to have to go through that. Please help them not have to go through the tribulation. Be ministers. You don't have to do much. You don't have to do, do much. But I'm calling you to action. You say you believe in God? Prove it. You say you believe in Jesus, you're the image of Jesus, but Jesus was a minister when he was here. He ministered to people. I'm asking you to do the same. You don't have to do much. All you gotta do is give them that seed. What's the seed? It's the Bible. They can either re reject it or they can accept it. If they accept it, they might read that Bible. If they read that Bible, they might just get saved. And even if they reject that Bible, you still, you still set forth yourself to do the work and the will of God. You still said, Lord, I believe in you as much as you believe in me. And you set forth yourself. Please do that. Because the tribulation is not going to, the tribulation is not going to be cool. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be anything that you would want your friends, your family, or your, your worst enemy to have to go through. Your worst enemy to go through. You're going to sympathize for your worst enemy. So why won't you fight for them now when we have the chance? And you know what? When I get to work, when I get my job, I'm going to do the same thing. They can either accept it or they don't have to. I'm at least going to hand out 15 Bibles every single week. Once I get to work, once I get a paycheck every single week, I'm going to hand out 15 Bibles every single week. Those people can either accept the word of God or they can reject it. But considering you live in a Christian nation, Christian nation, I don't care where you live. Get out there and speak for God. So what if you're persecuted? God said you would be. He was, he was persecuted. And he didn't give up. That's why they crucified him. Because he claimed to be the son of God. That's why they crucified him. Because he claimed to be God. And to them in their eyes that was blasphemy. Even though he wasn't lying. Even though he wasn't telling blasph being blasphemous, they still thought that was. They thought what they thought, and they sent him to the cross. But here's the thing. Here, here's what I'm gonna say. He would have died either way. He would. Have, he would have shed that blood. Either way, he was. He came. To die for our sins. He came to sacrifice himself for us. He is our lamb. He is our lion. He is our shield. Our sword. Our strength. Our, our healing. He's everything and more that you would ever want. Let people know. Because the time is at hand. And I say that with all seriousness. The time is at hand. And we're not a bunch of minds over here saying one thing, believing one thing, and then it doesn't happen. You couldn't even tell me. You can't even say it with a straight face that this was all made up. So everything we, be everything we believe in is in that Bible. Everything that was prophesied All those years back. If it's fake, why is it happening today? Why is it literally happening today? 
Oh, they predicted the future. They were mediums. You will probably go through the tribulation with that attitude. Please help people. Please help others. Don't hoard God to, him, to yourself. Don't hoard Jesus to yourself. Don't hoard the Holy Spirit with your, to yourself. If you share that Bible, you at least plant a seed. If you share that Bible with others, you at least will reap the reward for your labor. It says it in the word. You will reap the reward for your labor. So get out there. Plant 15 seeds every single week. I thank you for that. I know he does too. Because it matters to him. It matters to me. Because after what I saw and what I told you guys I saw, I'm, I would never lie to you. I would never lie before a congregation. I would never lie before God. <sighs> the time is at hand. Thank you guys for coming forth. It is more crucial now than it's ever been to get out there. And if you don't, their blood will be on your hand. And God will confront you about that. We have a responsibility as his, his hands and feet. And I suggest we take him at his word and take him at for who he is. In this day and time, we best not be ignorant of who he is because if we are, we are slanderers to his name. We are slanderous to him. And we are as and we are as the spirit of Antichrist. Please, with all sincerity in my heart, help your worst enemy. Help your friend. Help the stranger. Help your family. Help yourself. Anyone and everybody you can get to. Help them get out of here when they have the chance. Not, not talking about killing people, but <laughs> that Bible, it's life. Jesus is life. Jesus is the word. Jesus is life. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. In the beginning was Jesus. Jesus, and Jesus was with God. And Jesus is God. See you guys next week. I hope this reaches you. And I hope you start to speak on God's behalf. Because neither you or I have the choice to sit down and shut up anymore. We cannot allow government suppression to keep the Christian church down. We cannot allow our governments to shut God up because when that happens, this road is 